So what are we doing? Getting a... They're taking us to the cave. Cheese cave, right? That's what they say. Cool. Where the cheese is made. It smells so earthy. Lots of fertilizer action. Yeah, look at the puppy. Hi. <laughs> So are y'all interested in cheese, or did you just oh, very. Come yeah. Out so are you a family member, or you work no, here, or what? I'm not family, but I've known them for a really long time, so... Cool. They gave me a job one day, and they're like, hey, you want a job? It's like, alright, I'll, I'll take a job. So I've been working here ever since, and it's pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I actually spend most of my time out in the aging room is where we're going. I do, you know, I work in the shop and then I help with the actual cheese making as well, but I don't know the scientific, you know, put the rennet in when and the, all that jazz, so it's more of this work. And then the guy, that Chris, that went back that way, he milks the cows. And then another girl, she's not here today, but she actually helps with the cheese making too. She's learning how to make cheese, so it's a good deal. This is our wonderful aging room. It's not the fanciest thing ever, but it gets the job done. Wow. Oh my god. Turn the slide on. Oh my god. Yeah, these are our cheddar rows. This one here is newer. I'm just still cutting this. We have to flip all of this once a week. And then I have to flip, flip each and I have to coat it about four times on each side before it's done. This stuff is called Paracoat, which it's like glue, but it allows the cheese to breathe without it getting moldy on the inside too much. But mold's a great thing for cheese, so we really like it. It adds a lot of flavor. So these ones I'm coating, these are finished. We label them all out here, we flip them all out here. We have our jalapeno and redneck over there. And then this one you see looks different. This is a Gruyere, and it's, um, what we do is we take brine water, which is whey and salt, and I'll take a cloth and actually rub it on the cheese. So it soaks in, and then it'll harden, and it'll make a natural brine, which more people will prefer so that. So that doesn't have the coating like this does? Nope. This is coating. That's why that's a different color. Cool. But some cheeses, like if we tried to put a natural brine on cheddar, it just wouldn't work well, and it'd be so much work. And it tastes better with pear coat on it. Like, you don't actually eat the pear coat, but... It preserves it better. What's going on with this one? Is that like molding? That one should not have happened. <laughs> when we when we pressed it, I actually don't know. We're probably gonna have to cut that one up in the shop and only be able to sell maybe half of it. Because see, these are what the cheese curds actually look like more of when we're putting them in the molds and they just didn't put enough pressure on it or that we didn't fill it okay. up enough. So it didn't condense enough. So, yeah, the mold's starting to grow inside the cheese. So we aren't going to be able to sell that one wholesale. But if we cut it up, it won't affect the flavor of the cheese any. But sometimes, if we do it bad enough, we have to throw the whole wheel out. Like, we have to make sure that we fill it up. Yeah, that's actually the way the brine awesome. water. That I'll do on Gruyere. What's this one? That's a Gruyere? Uh-huh. That one has a taster hole in it. That's what this hole is. And even all this mold, all this mold is good. It's a good thing. We like all this. It probably shouldn't have cracked like this, but it won't hurt anything. Like, we'll just cut it. How long have you been making inside. cheese for? Um, he's been at this establishment for, I think they bought this land 20 years ago, but he only started making cheese about 10 years, 8 or 10 years ago. And so it's, it's good. He loves it. So it's not, we don't have anything, you know, ridiculously old. The oldest we have is like 2 years. How many acres does he have? One, one something, hundred something. I don't remember. It's not my apartment. We only, you know, milk about less than fifty cows. About forty-eight, no, forty-eight cows. So all this was made with about forty cows. Yeah, because we're getting so much milk now. We had to make it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. We had to make it five days this week. And usually we try to make it only every other day. So, it's getting full. We were running out of room. He's either going to have to build a bigger aging room or dry up some cows or do something. I don't know. So, 
Yeah, this is where we keep all of this. And then we have a separate for the blue cheese. So the blue cheese mold doesn't get here because it would completely take over this yeah. room. Man. So that'd be different than that kind of mold, right? Yeah. He like injects the mold, right? Um, or, uh... He puts, he tries, like, I don't think he injects any into the cheese making, but I think when he built this room, he put some in these shelves that look really gross. He actually imported from. I really don't remember, but he imported them because they were a cheesemaker had used them before him. So it's all in there. It's amazing how much cheese deals with really gross stuff, but it's still good. <laughs> like it's it's what makes it flavorful and real and good cheese. Yeah. Really? We, well, we took her on the float today in Dublin, the parade, the biggest thing ever. There was a parade today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was at 10, because St. Patrick's Day was Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we're all about Irish, and so it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's been really busy for us. There's... Mm. Oh my god. Some of our little babies. We keep them in here when they're little, because Grandma, Grandma lives over there. She bottle feeds them. And then when they get bigger, they'll go over there. And they have more room to roam and play and all that. How old is he? How old are they? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. They're young though. Like, do you think they're younger than a month? Yeah. Really? Probably two weeks. Wow. Two, three weeks. You are so cute. Yeah, this one actually has some grain in there too, so. Yeah, we try to take them away from their mothers right away so that they don't get mm -hmm. you know, too attached and all that. Mm -hmm. And then Grandma bottle feed them. And they're real cute at this age. Mm -hmm. I don't really like cows when they're bigger and dumb, but I like these. Oh my god, I they're like so adorable. Missed out on all this, wasn't it? I know, right? Terrible. And then when he came back for more and the store slowed down a little, I said, Man, you guys drove all the way from Dallas? Yeah. That's just wrong. So, thought we better get you in here. <laughs> cool, thank you. Thank you for showing us the uh, cheese cave. Did she take you next door here to the blue cheese? Oh, no. Oh, she was telling us about it. Chris can show you a minute. Go see the blue cheese. Sure. He messed up. He was supposed to meet me at Grand Rapids, and he ended up in the park, so he couldn't find his own way home. Oh no! So we've been married too long. I know, right? Yeah. So, I've been married fifty, six, seven oh years. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess Grandpa's gonna get home somehow. Okay. Well, we'll send you in a minute. Okay. Why don't you go with Chris? He'll show you the blue cheese. Right? Okay. Cool. So are are you family? Or are you no? Okay. Friends of the family. Cool. I went to school with his kids in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's and, um, I was working two jobs and still wasn't making enough money to support myself. What, what were you doing? Just like Joe jobs or? Well, I was uh, working at an auto zone and waiting tables. Not, not enough hours, not enough pay, not enough customers, all of that stuff. That's a nice door. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart and I actually just made this out of birch wood. Oh my god. And then on the inside of this, it's uh, one big slab of uh, styrofoam. It just makes great, great insulation. Yeah. And uh, after we're done with the cave, like whenever the cheeses are pretty much finished aging and stuff, We'll bring them in here so that if we need more, we don't have to make that long walk all the way up to the cave and come back. So all of these are already good to go and they're set and ready to, ready to be sold and eaten. 
She was saying that like one of those um, could be like 11 to whatever pounds and it's yeah, like, it's so that could be like a couple hundred dollars of, that's crazy, oh, yeah. from 40 oh, yeah. cows, that's beautiful. Good for them. Oh yeah, and we actually have a, uh, the Houston Dairy Maids. They come about once a month, and they'll pick up anywhere from 50 to, one time they actually picked up about 90 wheels. So that's, wow. uh, that's a bench, 90 wheels, that's, that's a lot. This is our blue cheese aging room. Our blue cheese after they've uh, been soaking in the brine. Is that what they soak in? Mm-hmm. So those are uh, some Swiss wheels. I think they're, they're past seven months of age. Pretty soon he's going to be trying to get some sample to try it out. Wow. So, uh, in this building is really interesting because uh, they made it out of paper creeks. And uh, it's a mixture of what you do, you get water and, oh, I should probably shift a little. <laughs> water and paper, any kind of paper. You can get cardboard, you can get newspaper, just any kind of recyclable, recyclable paper. And you mix it into a pulp, and then you put um, uh, cement. And you end up with this, right here. It's very lightweight. Oh, wow. And mm, it yeah. also uh, is a great <laughs> insulator. Yeah. It's about 14 inches thick, so <laughs> the little coolers that we have in there to keep the cheese at the right temperature, I mean, they flip on and flip right off. I mean, you barely, barely lose any of what Literally, you need. see. Paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paper concrete. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. It's really neat stuff. And then on the outside, we just did a stucco layer. And we, we actually have a guy, he uh, made this door. Yeah, so, it's a nice looking door. Yeah, he's a, he's a phenomenal guy, of course. We've kind of uh, I've been kind been of, a little rough. I've been a wood rat lately. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah it's a lot of fun. <laughs> but, uh, I think they actually said the, the uh, papercrete was bulletproof, so we tried it out. Really? With a Glock. It's really close to bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went through. We put a put a big old 50 gallon barrel, metal barrel inside, and whenever we shot it, you could hear the ding on the inside, we're like, oh, close, close, but not quite. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, and this is right here, you can kind of see how we put it together. We just had molds, mm -hmm. and we just poured one piece, let it dry, poured another, let it dry, poured another, let it dry. CD. It wasn't a good one. That'd be yeah. kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but pretty much all the stuff that he does, he's just, just trying to conserve all the energy he can and try to recycle stuff like using the paper creep out of all the paper that you've gone through, the insulation, even in the... Uh, you, can, you can build houses with that stuff? Oh, yeah. 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 He's actually looking into the building some straw. To, he has big plans for this place. He wants to make these uh, little cabins out here so people can come and stay. He wants to add a second floor for the restaurant. And he wants, wants to make a it's really good place to make it. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. And I hear those things are awesome. Yeah, they're really comfy. Can you only get them online? Some too. I guess. No, you can.